Okay, so today's topic is romance and sex in a role-playing situation. Now, I'm not saying people actually having that. That's a whole separate topic and different podcast. I'm talking about the kind that involves dice. So, first of all, um, let me start off with saying that my game group, we're not prudes. Um, in fact, I'm a professional body painter. I actually get paid to go to various clubs and paint people. Art galleries, um, I've worked for MTV, I've worked for the Australian Museum, um, and people that are nude, it just happens. It's no big deal. Um, in fact, most of the artwork on my walls at home are examples of my artwork. So, that said, not approved. Um, and the, the other, other members of our group, also not prudes. So when I say that, when I say this next part, which is that we pretty much keep everything at a PG rated. Um, I mean, other than the violence, um, it's um, just how we do it. Um, now we do have, in our main group, we do have one character who is known for bringing, you know, unzipping her sweater just a little bit when it comes to distracting a guard. Um, but it, first of all, one, it fits her character. Two, um, it never gets into detail. Um, I mean, we will do a vignette of saying, well, she sneaks off with someone. Um, but it never goes into detail. We. It, we just, it just would make others feel uncomfortable. In fact, one of the things to consider is that when, when you're in a game group, you have to consider, one, setting the appropriate expectations. And we've already set that. We basically said, look, my daughter is one of the players. So even though she's 18, it's a whole bag of awkward if I was to all of a sudden start talking about some sort of sexual situation in front of her. That's just creepy. So, we don't. Um, the other thing is is that um, I am I get paid as a, as a professional body painter. I'm really good at reading people. And in a group of eight people, I'm not going to say that I am smart enough to determine what would offend any of those people. Now, I know a few people are here like, oh, freedom of speech, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, but here's the thing. Um, I'm not a political rally. I'm not at a, um, a free speech conference. Um, I'm with my friends. And so not offending them in my living room is considered being a good host. Now, one of the things to consider is that we, not too long ago, we had one of our guests cross a line. And we had more than one person come up to me and say, hey Kev, what they said was not appropriate in any shape or form. Um, and one of those people was my daughter. Now, at that point, what I did is I had a conversation with this person and I basically said, look, comments like that are not appropriate in this context. In many cases, they're not appropriate anywhere. Now, what happened was, is that because I brought one, I, I, I took the player aside. I had a conversation with them. I set expectations and then I set the boundary. And you know something? This player is still playing with us and is now the major proponent of making sure that everyone feel, feels comfortable and everyone is having a great time. In fact, I'm currently having to possibly split the group up in two groups, not because they don't get along, but because um, 10 people running Shadowrun is a bit much for me, so I may have to break it up into various groups. Um, and because I want to play with these people, all of them are really awesome, but it's just getting a much for one GM. So, um, you have to consider, okay, if my character is going to be flirting, what does the player think about this? You've got to think of, okay, 
yeah, my character would do this. That's fine. What does the player think? Um, I have seen, and I've heard horror stories of situations where someone has crossed a line. In fact, I've seen a game group destroyed because someone did. Um, because someone made a comment in front of some about someone's character, and that that person was currently going through a bad um, breakup with someone across the table, and it resulted in lots of jealousy and a lot of issues outside of game. So anything involving romance or sex or whatnot, you need to make sure everyone's on the same page. Now, I know of groups that flirting across the table is more than appropriate. In fact, I remember a second edition Shadowrun game where that is exactly what happened, and my girlfriend and I, we loved it. That was fantastic. Uh, you know, we're on fifth edition now, and we still talk about it. Um, so it's, it is something that can be healthy and a lot of fun, but assuming that everyone's on the same page. And I think that's the important part. And if, let's say you are one of those people that enjoys that sort of thing and you find out that, and you feel like everyone else around you is being approved, perhaps you should find a group where you're appreciated because just because you're in an environment where it's not and you feel stifled maybe you need to be in a different group. Uh, on the other hand, um, if you are in a group where everyone else is making you feel uncomfortable, that goes the same way. Um, you know, we, we, we do need to find that balance between being appropriate and, f you know, um, and, you know, not offending anyone and cutting loose. And it all comes down to consent and appropriate boundaries. Once you establish that, it's all fun. Okay, so no Ask a GM today, mainly because, well, the first part was pretty long and intense, so we're just going to go straight to shoutouts. So we'll start off with, once again, Steamrollers Podcast. You guys were wondering whether or not they're paying me. No, actually, they're not. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and they are going to be using Roll versus Roll, so it is a kind of a mutual thing that we're doing. Uh, definitely worth listening to. Um, start from episode one. Um, you'll get to see why it's a little bit different from most actual plays. I uh, also want to thank for being active DM Dan Fielding. Um, Dude, you always have great things to say, so I highly recommend following him. Studious Daniel, uh, the GURPS guy. This guy knows almost everything about GURPS. Worth also following if you like GURPS. Uh, of course, Orcs Unlimited. And, oh, this one's been way overdue. Killer Roo. Killer Roo, we've been talking for a while. He was, um, uh, he, he was perhaps the most excited about Roll vs. Roll coming to Kickstarter. Um, he's been a great supporter. He's been uh, very active. He's got a lot to say. Um, also worth following. 